We bless the name of the Lord for another privilege and opportunity today as we earnestly expect the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Revival must continue. And any moment from now he will come. The Lord has granted us another privilege and the opportunity to be here today to share with you from the holy, authentic, inerrant, and infallible word of God. So you are welcome. Let's bow our heads in prayers before we hear from the Lord. Ancient of days, you are the lily of the valley. You are the bright and morning star. You are the king of kings. You are the coming king. We respect your name. We bow. We worship you in humble adoration. Father, we are asking this day that you might open our eyes. That we may behold permanent treasures out of your holy writ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the scriptures. Turn with me to the book of Luke, Gospel Luke, chapter 17. Let's go to Luke Gospel, chapter 17. Luke 17 from 26. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so also will it be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating, drinking, Marrying and being given in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. Then the Lord came and destroyed them all. It was the same in the days of Lord. People were eating and drinking. Age of eating. Age of eating. Buying and selling. Age of merchandise. And building. But a day Lot left Sodom, fire and sulfur ran down from heaven and destroyed them all. It will be just like this on the day the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, no one who is on the roof of his house with his goods inside should go down to get them. Likewise, no one in the field should go back for anything. And let me jump to verse 34. I tell you, on that night, two people will be in one day. One will be taken and the other will be left. Two women will be grinding grain together. One will be taken and the other left. Today, my message is coming in the form of exclamation. Call it exclamation. Call it a soft question. I believe that every sensible human being Every sensible Christian, every sensible preacher, everyone who is born again must have that sense of the future, especially thinking of the eternity, thinking of the time when the curtain of life shall be drawn. And so as we get into this kind of flow, I have a topic that is very, very important to me as a preacher. Very important to every other preacher. Very important to every musician. Very important to every Christian. And very important to every man who has a hope. And what is that topic? So, you later came here. So, you later came here. Take it again. Write it down. Enshrine it into your heart. Don't forget it. So, you later came here. Mr. Preacher, what do you mean? We've just read, we are the Lord referred to us. What happened in the days of Noah? People were relaxing. Probably some were thinking that God may change his mind. He will no longer come up with judgment as he had said. People were relaxing. And I tell you, if God will not bring judgment, he will apologize to Satan. If God will not judge sinners, he will apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. If God will not judge sinners, he will apologize to Lord's generation. Now, back to the scripture. This question presupposes an earlier objection. 
an earlier objection, very strong objection. You vowed. You said, come shine, come rain. I can never, never, never go to this place. Even in the dream, I will not go there. Even in life, I will not go there. But at a surprise the last, I said, at a surprise last, you, not your brother, you, not another person, you, not your uncle, you, I mean yourself, you, you, at last, that place you vowed not to go, you found yourself in that place. And when you found yourself in that place, somebody who re will recognize you, somebody who knew where you made the vow, somebody you busted before and you said, I can't go there. Somebody who saw you sing and in your song, you sang it and you can't go there. He saw you and he looked at you eyeball to eyeball. And he said, ah? So, you later came here. This question, there are three people that I suspect one of them might ask you this question. Number one is Satan himself. That is, for a Christian after everything, a pastor, a preacher, after everything, you still go to hell. After all your churchianity, after all your popularity, you still go to hell. And then, the devil will recognize you because there, of course there will be recognition in hell. And look at you and he will say, so, you later came here. If it is not the devil, one demon might ask you this question. If it is not one demon, maybe a prostitute living by your corner. You've been disturbing her with your gospel. Maybe somebody else You've been shouting, disturbing the person. Maybe a robber. Maybe somebody who is in a narcotic home. Somebody who refused to repent the death. You know, God's mercy will end that death. That the person will recognize you. And he will look at you. And he say, ah. So you didn't join your people to heaven. Ah. You mean you of all the people. You, you, you of every all the people. So, you later came here. Well, brethren, this is a very serious question and a very serious topic. It's a big surprise. There are three great questions of life. And these three great questions of life, number one, where do I come from? Number two. Why am I here? Number three. Where am I going? Under number one. Where do I come from? It's either you are a creationist. Or evolutionist. Well. In my own summary. Evolutionists simply believe that the ape is their uncle. If you are an evolutionist. It means you are saying. Ape, that is monkey is the junior brother of my father that is simply what you are saying and if monkey is your uncle then that is it but there are also people who believe they we are created by God and let me assure you today if you believe God created you God will also be there at the end of your life and you are accountable to God Number two question. Why am I here? If you find my message on injury time part two, it's been able to explain why we are here. I'm not going to talk about why am I here. Now, number three question. Say, where are we going? You know, where are we going? I want to say that science has no answer concerning where we are going. Science will tell you that uh, because of the depletion of the ozone layer, that very soon everybody will go blind. Sometimes uh, science might tell you that the, 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 the sun might explode very soon and the, the world might change. Well, science can put fears in you. Science has no answer concerning where we are going from here. But ladies and gentlemen, brothers in Christ, my friends, 
I have a book, a compass that has told us where we are going. There is something, a book, a compass that is specific concerning where we are going from here. God did not leave us without direction. The Bible, the authentic, infallible, inherent word. Word, this word that has been persecuted more than any other book, yet it prevails more than any other book. This word tells us where we are going from here. And because we have eternity in focus, that's why this message is very important. There are people I call miserable Pentecostals. Who is a miserable Pentecostal? Look at what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 19. He says, if your hope in Christ is only in this life. If your hope in Christ is only here. So that it is where you get seven limousines. That's only your hope. You get prosperity. That is your only purpose of coming to the church. Then he says, you are of all men very miserable if you are living and you don't have a hope of his glorious coming then you are a very miserable person if you are going to church no matter your title and you do not have a hope of the glorious coming of our lord jesus christ then you are miserable now will the lord really come yes he will but there are surprises that will take place if i will take you back to luke gospel again chapter 12 verse 40 luke chapter 12 Verse 40. He says in Luke 12, verse 40. You must also be ready. Because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Not when you finish seven days praying and fasting. No, 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 no. Not even in a church service. I wrote a book and the title is Days of Spiritual Low Percent. The Lord may not even come during your days of high percent. The Lord may not even come that day when you are speaking in tongue 24 hours. He may come, take you by surprise at an hour when you do not expect it. And that's why even if the Lord delays a bit, do you realize that death may meet you unprepared? If you go further in that Luke chapter 12 verse 45, the Bible says, But suppose the servant says to himself, My master is taking a long time in coming. He then begins to beat the men servants and men servants, servants and to eat and drink and get drunk. The master of that servant will come on a day when he doesn't expect him, and at an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the unbelievers. Are you prepared? Death may meet you unprepared. Do I repeat and re-emphasize that if you go to the burial ground, you will see on a complete vision. If you go to the burial ground, you will see unfulfilled dreams. Listen, the greatest shock that can take place in your life is for you to die when you are not prepared to meet the Savior. And because you do not know when you will die. It doesn't matter the number of faith, the amount of faith, or the level of faith that you are operating on. You don't know when you are going to die. Yes, it can come earlier than expected. It can come later than expected. Rapture can meet you prepared. Not in a camp meeting, but I know even if the Lord comes in a camp meeting, there are still people who will not go. If the Lord comes on, on Sunday morning, there are still people in the church who will remain and carry the posses and the Bibles and the, 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 those who are raptured that the Bible they came to the church with. Yes, there are people who will remain there. When they step out, somebody will say, I hear that your people have disappeared. Are you still with us? The Lord may not come in a revival time. He may not come in a crusade. He may come at an hour when you do not expect it. Now, back to the issue. What is the issue today? That God said two people will be lying down on a bed. Maybe husband and wife. One shall be taken and the other shall be left. Two people may be singing together. Just as they are singing, giving special numbers in the church. One will disappear and the other one will be left. 
The surprise is a surprise. Now let's go. So you later came here. Huh? What a sudden. That that Bible carrier. In fact, the type of Bible you carry is even greater than the pulpit Bible. That after all these things, after all this, you are carrying Bible. You still went to her, and the devil will say, So, you let back in. And many people, when you greet them, brother, good morning. If you say good morning, they say praise the Lord and return. I've also seen people. When you tell them, good afternoon, they say Jehovah Shammah. But, thank God for this wonderful, you know, jargon. But, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's come to basis. Let's come to reality. If I make a noise, and I didn't make it, what will happen to me? The unknown church goer finally ended in her. And the devil will see the church goer. And he says, So, you let her come here. I don't wish to shout above your heads in this message. It should be a solemn message. It should be a message I should go home and begin to think about. It's very serious. Imagine you. Every Thursday night, wherever it is stayed, you are there. Midnight battle, you are there. Everywhere, you are there. And after all this tarrying and tarrying and tarrying and tarrying, being awake instead of sleeping on your Vita foam, Vono foam, Teju foam, and Mocha foam. After suffering yourself, that at the end of the day, the hell you dreaded, my God. Ah, the hell you preached against. You see your, yourself stepping into her. And the devil will look at you and say, Ah, so you let her come here. What am I saying? That the general overseer, after leading the people, Pointing to them towards the promised land. That you will not step into the promised land. That the president and founder finally went to her. That the general superintendent, a presbyter, a bishop, very reverend, right reverend, moderator, elder, chief elder, ancient elder, middle elder, lower elder. That's a deacon. Deaconess, Sunday school worker, or worker in the church. But after all these things, you went to hell. And the devil will look at you and say, So, you later came here. Uh, that a worker, chorus. I walk along the street, I see people. They ask, are you the preacher of this message that have changed our life? Do you mean that after preaching life changing messages? Brother, do you mean that after singing and your songs will bless people and your songs and messages will cause them to repent and that people will lift up their two hands that people who are about to die when they hear you preach, when they hear you sing they repent and say, I will no longer sin against God. God. How can I? After all this thing, at last, I will hear the voice. So, you let that come. Christianity has brought you persecution. When you came to Christ, you forgot your brother's addresses. You forgot your parents' addresses. I mean, everything you are, it's in Christ. This race, how can I finish up? Only to hear the voice. So, you let her come. 
I still remember the man of God from Judah. A man who had power and anointing. The king wanted to arrest him. His hand was electrocuted by the anointing. But at last, he had spiritual accident and became a casualty. What am I saying? That a graduate of a seminary, a lecturer with BAMO, a PhD, DD, that after all these religious titles and training, you still went to her. Only to her. So, you let her come. Brother, if I count how much you have spent in the church, you can use it to build your own bungalow. You have spent your fortune. In fact, 99% of your friends are in the Lord. How will it sound? That at the end of the day, he still stepped into her. To hear the voice. So, you later came here. You have made very vows. Made very vows. I remember you, brother. You go to me. You bind the devil. You thunder the devil. You rend the devil. Quake the devil. Kill the devil. Bury the devil. Do everything. And after all these things, after burying the devil, you still go to the hell where the devil resides. And he will see you to say, So, you let that come here. And he will make that comment in a time when there will be no Jesus to deliver you. Go oh, read that. Because when you step into hell, the door of mercy has closed. Hell is a place where no prayers are answered. People will repent in hell. People will seek God in hell. But God will pay deaf ears to their prayers. That is the terrible, the tragedy of hell. So, you let her come in. Now, God, let's, 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 let's get it real. The Bible says, two will sleep on the same bed. What does it mean? Now, why should two people sleep? Or two persons? Maybe they are husbands and wives. Or two boys. Two friends. Living in the same room. Sleeping together. Maybe one is a hypocrite. But they still go to the same church. Mr. and Mrs. Deacon and Deaconess. Brother and sister. They still go to the same church. Let me tell you. Nobody knows you. I don't know how and where you are hearing this message from. But tell your neighbor. I don't know you. I don't know you. Nobody knows you in detail. Your wife does not know you in detail. Your pastor does not even know you. If you want to commit sin, you can commit sin intelligently and nobody will discover. Nobody knows you. Nobody knows you. I'm not a Christian because I'm monitored. No. If you're a Christian because people monitor you, then you're not a Christian. You are not a Christian. Because in the darkest of dark, there's an invisible eye. In the darkest of dark. Who knows you? Listen. A day shall come, I know, when there will be permanent separation. People may trust you. They may cry. You are a saint. They may, I mean, they may bow before you. They may call you uh, Jesus. Another, a physical Jesus. Nobody knows you. Only you. Only you. Only you. And the Father in heaven. And even the devil. I will still come to tell you why I say the devil knows you. He is the person who brings the temptation. And he knows when you fall. He knows. Now, two persons may be lying down. One will be taken and the other will be left. It means these people share the same aspiration. They had the same past. They had the same opportunity. They were joined in matrimony. They are tight friends. But there will be a day of permanent separation when sinners shall be separated from sin. I pray that the Lord the ancient of days. Who knows you and knows me? Reverend, don't be quick. 
Don't be quick to go away. I would like you to listen to this message. It concerns everybody. Because if you hear this comment, then you are finished. If you hear this comment, it means you messed up your Christianity. So, you let her come here. And if there is anything the devil wants to say concerning you, it is the word. So, you let her come here. If there is a word that demons want to say concerning you, it is the word. So, you let her come here. If there is a word that mockers want to say concerning you, it is the word. So, you let her come here. If there is any hard desire, if there is any reason why the devil is tempting you, it is because he wants to give you this comment, so you let her come here. If there is any reason why the devil would like you to live in sin or still go to church, it is because he wants to make this comment to you, so you let her come here. And that's why it behooves us today to make a special consideration. This race, now, Paul said, who bewitched you? How did you begin in the spirit? And you are now finishing up in the flesh. Listen, real success is ending up in heaven. Real success. It's not that the church has honored you, the church has given you a position. It is ending up in heaven. So, you let her come here. So, you let her come here. So, you let her come here. We will go to the other side and still begin this very message and continue with this message till the end.